why do we wimp now there are various 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 theories that why do we bim and why do we require to apply bim on a project and especially for a small and medium sized company and this chart is a very good example this chart is created by patrick mcclaney he's a retired ceo from hok and he is a, a well known author and he created this chart where he would explain that how when we have the starting of the project we put the maximum effort and and the impact of the design change on cost is minimal and impact of the uh, design change on functional capability is really high and as we go on different milestones we achieve different milestones on the project or with different time how uh, each design process affects these abilities to impact cost and uh, impact the whole design process let's see uh, this graph in detail i will explain that how in starting my uh, ability to change design ability to affect the functional capabilities of design it's really high at the start of the project but as we move forward to different stages the ability becomes less and less and less and we can really not think about doing a lot of changes at ca stage or of course not at at operation stage however right at the start of the project our our process of design change will will cost us much 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 lesser right at the pre design or the schematic design stage but as we move forward in the project this cost especially towards the end of uh, construction document stage it spikes really high and if we have to make a design change at that point of time it is it is just going to make the project really really over budget what our traditional design process does is uh, especially when we are adopting cad is that uh, of course it's um, the cost is really low at the start and all our effort and everything is is really concentrated be- between design development and construction document stage but what my bim process does to this is that we make a lot of decisions right at the start or right where my cost is really low my cost impact is really low but effect of my design change is really high so it it's all about when and how i make design changes or how how, how and when we uh, propose design changes in the process if we think about the situation today i don't think digital future is is any time avoidable and and i will just give you like a reverse calculation in that that we are already talking about smart cities we are already talking about internet of things we are talking about how my intelligent shopping or smart environment or smart buildings and street lights and waste management everything being smart and by smart means that there is certain intelligence built into the systems that are operating all these uh, infrastructure that will self run or that will understand that um, a very simple example would be that if if there is no person working in a certain area in an office space the lights shut down automatically or the thermostat adjusts itself when the thermal reading of people inside the room increases or decreases so so stuff like that but how will that smart city come into place that smart city the basic thing in the, in, a, in a smart city would be smart buildings and and unless we create a digital twin uh, for a smart city we can't really really do the semantics so to create my digital twins it means that i have to create what is actually going to be built on site tomorrow i already can see and visualize and do my interferences check and reduce my construction cost and do all of that stuff because i have modeled the whole the whole project or the whole building just before it is going to be built on the site and because of all this we are also talking about stuff like e permitting we are talking about um, how city has or uh, there is a central repository of information where a municipal body or a city has information where my buildings are what do my plans say if there is any kind of um, permitting that needs to be happen it goes directly into the 
system and uh, there are automatic code checking and there's automatic compliance checking for for our models for our for our buildings which means that we have to start from something that these e permitting softwares can read which means starting with uh, an information loaded model a model that can be read by this e permitting software and then that e permitting software can create a repository of information in form of a digital twin and then that digital twin can aid in in creating a, a smart city or a digital city also if we look at an individual building level or an at an individual asset what we talk about is is data we all know how data is important and we all know how access to data has become the most important thing these days look at how things are working within uh, a building within a building we have smart system systems access we have power management we have uh, smart water management we have alternative energy so all the system that we are talking about it's going to read data from somewhere it's going to regulate data from somewhere and if we want to cater to that kind of market we really cannot just sit and do beautiful drawings on the drawing board we have to come up with uh, a model that can be used for different parts of of this uh, whole process hello everyone i hope you like this video this video is a clip from our three part webinar series bim for small to medium sized companies if you want to listen to the entire webinar please subscribe to our channel and click on the link in the description you can also follow us on linkedin twitter facebook and instagram you can also visit us at www.bimwise.com